Hi guys, it's Byron for Modern Muscle Extreme here. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through a few things related to camshafts with your uh, Gen 3 Hemi engine. Uh, I'm going to go over uh, the camshaft installation, uh, degreeing procedure, uh, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, MDS system and why, you, why we here at Modern Muscle think that you should delete it. Um, and uh, the other thing I'm going to touch on is some failures associated with improper camshaft installation. Uh, that is the main reason that we are taking the time to make this video. Uh, there's been a lot of misinformation and a lot of blaming comp cams and you know the camshaft manufacturer, uh, and it's not their fault. It's it's always associated you know when you have a pin failure with you know with an improper clamping load, and I obviously I'll go over that here in a few minutes. Um, but we just want to tell you to don't be this guy because this is what happens when you don't install your camshaft properly. Okay, so if you're thinking about purchasing a Modern Muscle Extreme custom camshaft, there's probably a, there's a few things that you definitely need to know before you start the process because there may be a few more parts involved than what you originally thought. So. The first thing that I need to let you guys know is that if you're going to install a Modern Muscle Extreme custom camshaft from Comp Cams, um, you're going to want to make sure that you delete your MDS system. If your car is equipped with MDS, the easiest way to tell, there will be solenoids here instead of, uh, you know, instead of plugs. And, uh, you know, basically any automatic equipped Chrysler vehicle uh, from 2005 all the way up is still going to have uh, an MDS system installed and typically manual transmission vehicles are the only ones that uh, did not receive the MDS system. So if you install the Modern Muscle Extreme Custom Camshaft, you have to get rid of the MDS system because the MDS lifter does not, it will not interface properly with the Comp Custom Camshaft. You're going to get a lot of uh, lifter ticking issues um, and then also there's been a ton of MDS lifter related failures, uh, typically what happens is the actual the actual roller bearing inside of the MDS lifter here will seize up and fail. And what will happen is, is this guy just chews its way through the lobe on the camshaft because instead of spinning like it should, it just stays stationary and it will just eat its way through the camshaft and that puts metal throughout your entire engine. So whether or not, you know, one thing we're also offering now here at Modern Muscle Extreme is factory non-MDS camshafts. Um, you know, the cost is a lot less than doing a custom cam, typically between $100 to $250 for the actual camshaft itself, uh, for a, depending if you have a 5.7 or a 6.4. And, uh, you know, if you install that, you're, you're still going to have to delete your MDS lifters because this lifter will also not work with the factory Mopar non-MDS camshaft. Uh, this lifter will uh, basically, the way that it, this is the other way you identify an MDS lifter is this little check ball in here. This lifter will collapse on itself uh, and shut down, you know, four cylinders for, you know, better fuel economy reasons. Um, but it also doesn't work on the factory MDS camshaft and what will happen is uh, you'll get really rough idle on four of the cylinders because the uh, factory Mopar non-MDS camshaft, the, the lobe is designed differently than an MDS camshaft and uh, it, will, it will tick and it literally acts like it has a larger camshaft installed so you're going to get a really rough idle and possibly misfire codes on those four MDS you know, cylinders. So uh, just be aware that if you're thinking about buying a camshaft, you're definitely going to want to do an MDS delete if your vehicle is equipped with an MDS system. So, and one other thing I'd also like to touch on is if you buy the Modern Muscle Extreme MDS delete kit, you're going to receive uh, the newer, updated, large roller bearing. You can actually see the roller bearing. Uh, you know, from the side if you look at it. And this is actually the lifter that is in production and comes in the new, you know, 700 horsepower Hellcat engine. So this is a much more reliable lifter. Uh, we've not had any, you know, lifter related failures with this lifter. So uh, it's definitely an upgrade because like I said, when the MDS system fails, it takes out, I mean, it takes out everything. It takes out the camshaft, 
Uh, it'll pump oil all through your engine. It usually takes out the bearings. It'll take cam bearings out. Um, it, it makes a large mess of the entire engine. And uh, personally, in my experience, I do not feel that the MDS system, the, the fuel economy gain, if you will, is worth the risk of risking your, you know, your engine at this point. So I think that's about. show you now is uh, how to properly align your timing marks if you're doing this in the car and you have the oil pump blocking your view of you know of the lower timing gear so what we're going to want to do here is actually make our own timing marks so very first thing you're going to want your number one piston up at top dead center and then you're going to want the mark on your phaser limiter up and obviously your timing marks are going to be somewhere else in the chain system other than right here so what we're going to do is obviously we've already marked our upper gear but you'll want to put a little dot uh, you know in between the two links that you're gonna you're gonna cover so we're gonna cover that guy and that guy have our mark in the middle and then I'm gonna come down here ourselves basically three reference points to be able to uh, you know realign our timing marks uh, that way you don't have to worry about dropping your oil pan and all this crazy stuff just to get this off so you can see your timing marks at this point we've already compressed our tensioner so that way that we can do this if you don't do that your tensioner will fly over in the spring and all that mess will come out into your oil pan so let's not do that definitely take the tension off this first uh, if you buy the modern muscle extreme uh, timing chain set uh, you know your new tensioner is going to come with a pin if not a small piece of wire will work uh, you know just to compress this back with a pair of pliers and then slide something in to hold the pin careful uh, and this goes into disassembly you know when you're when you're taking your old cam out so just imagine that this is in your car this is your old camshaft you know you've got cylinder heads and all that on here uh, but what we're going to want to do is we're going to keep all the tension onto our lower uh, you know timing gear here because uh, we do not want the mark we do not want the chain to rotate on the lower gear without the lower gear rotating in which case we would throw our timing marks off so we're gonna, I'm going to keep tension up on this, just like that, and I'll slip our, you know, your phaser out. We're going to take this, we're going to pull it over the side, and we're going to let it hang. Um, you know, my, I, I've watched very carefully and I made sure that my timing chain has not moved. Um, so, uh, you know, you can also take a piece of wire and kind of hang this and then pull on it to give it some tension if you're worried about it moving. And then at this point, you'll pull your old camshaft, you know, you'll take your four bolts out, you'll pull your old camshaft out, you'll go through, and then you'll put your new camshaft in, you'll put your plate back on, take our phaser sprocket here again, come back in here very carefully, and this is, this can be a little bit tricky, so you may have to work with it a little bit, but you want to keep upward pressure on the chain to keep it from, from slipping, okay? Kind of work the chain around it, okay? And then we're gonna put our phaser back on. We're gonna put our bolt in, hand tight. That way we can verify that our timing marks are where they need to be. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, obviously during this whole process, whatever you do, do not rotate the engine over because that is keeping your timing marks lined up where they need to be. And I'm looking here and my two dots are still, you know, they're back on my upper gear. 
my dot here is exactly lined up with my um, with my chain and my guide and then my tensioner as well and if it were to slip on the lower gear you know obviously these marks would be uh, rotated around and they wouldn't line back up so if the chance that does happen to you you can kind of work with your chain around and you can still move it in car and move your chain back around until all your timing marks line back up and then at which point you could uh, proceed with the camshaft installation process. Camshafts, I uh, go over a few things that typically go wrong on installation and kind of show you guys some tips and tricks on how to do this. So the first step you're going to want to do is clean your camshaft. Uh, the way they come out of the box, they are not ready to be installed in your engine. You definitely need to clean them first. So what you're going to want to do is inspect uh, your camshaft uh, bolt hole for debris. Uh, you're going to want to look down in the little VVT passages here uh, and make sure that there are also no debris uh, in those passages. And one thing new that we've noticed is the new core from Comp is gun drilled. And you're going to want to make sure that uh, there are no, also no debris uh, in the gun drilling portion of the camshaft. The easiest way to clean the camshaft is going to be a five gallon bucket filled halfway with Dawn and hot water. You stand the cam uh, on the end in the bucket and you'll want to, I use a red scotch bright pad here and using a circular motion go back and forth uh, to get any burrs off of the edge of the cam lobes. As they come from comp, the edges of the cam lobes can get very, uh, can have lots of little burrs on them, and you want to make sure all those are off before you install what's in your engine. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead, now that we've cleaned our camshaft, we're going to go ahead and install it in our engine. So I have this special camshaft installer made. Uh, you can just use the bolt to help you install it into the engine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and thread this into here. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is apply some assembly lube to the camshaft. Um, here at Modern Muscle, I use the Lucas lube. Uh, Royal Purple would also work well. Okay. We're going to apply a stripe of assembly lube down the camshaft. And then we're going to rotate the camshaft around and get the assembly lube on all the lobes. Next we're going to take our camshaft and install it into the engine. We're going to go ahead and take our camshaft that's fully lubed up and we're going to go ahead and install it into the engine. We're going to be very careful to not damage our camshaft bearings. Uh, going slowly and twisting the camshaft as you go in always helps to keep from damaging the bearings. Okay. Once we have our camshaft installed, the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure that it rotates freely, and in this case it does. So we'll go ahead and remove our installer. And on a VVT engine, the next thing you're going to want to do is install the camshaft thrust plate. Uh, this sets the end plate for the camshaft. You're also going to want to apply a small dab of blue Loctite to each of the bolts. Now that we have our camshaft thrust plate installed, we're going to go ahead and torque down the bolts. I'll finish running them in here.
going to torque our bolts up to 115 inch pounds. One thing that's also good to do is put a small paint pin mark on the bolt to make sure you know that you've torqued it. Alright, and the next step you're going to want to do is install your comp cams phaser limiter kit. Uh, your phaser limiter is going to come in a box like this. Uh, and it's going to include the tool and the actual limiter itself. So we're going to take our phase limiter and we're going to find the pin that retains the spring for the phaser. And what I always do to keep from messing this up is flip it over and put no on the bolt. That way I know not to remove this bolt only to loosen it up. If you remove this bolt the spring will become unwound and there is no way to wind it back up and you ruin the phaser limiter. One important thing to note on the phaser limiter installation is this pin. I'm not sure you can see it right here. The pin actually holds the spring from unwinding and if you remove this pin fully, the spring will unwind in the phaser limiter and it'll ruin the actual phaser limiter as there is no way to rewind and reclock the spring. So what I do is I put a no on the bolt so that way you know to only lightly loosen this bolt but not take it all the way out. We're gonna take our phaser limiter and our phaser limiter tool and there's a secondary pin that needs to be removed and we're going to take, what the tool does is it pulls the spring back away from the pin and allows you to remove the pin. Because the ultimate goal here is to take this plate and swing it around so we can install our actual limiter. So we're going to take our tool, put it like that over the spring. And then we're going to tighten this down. Not all the way, just enough to pull the spring tension back off of the pin. We're going to rotate it over. And then we're going to remove all the bolts except for the no bolt. Then in order, in order to move our retention plate around, we're going to have to loosen the no bolt but not take it all the way out. So I'm going to very carefully loosen the no bolt. Just like that. And this will let us slide our plate around and install our phaser limiter. Now, the correct orientation to install the phaser limiter will be in this position, just above the tool. The way that you know that it's in the right spot is this will be contacting the inside of the phaser limiter right here and there will be no gap like the other ones. 
So we're gonna take our phaser limiter. We're gonna install it just like so. And then we're gonna take our plate and we're gonna put it right back. We're gonna apply a small dab of Loctite to each of the bolts before we reinstall them. One other important thing to note on reassembly is that the long bolt with the pin goes back where the tool goes. It's very important that it goes back here, otherwise it will also uh, allow your phaser limiter to unwind. Okay, now that we have all our bolts reinstalled, we're going to go ahead and torque up our phaser limiter bolts. Uh, the torque spec you're going to use is 14 foot-pounds. Uh, this can be a little tricky to torque. You may want to have somebody help hold the phaser limiter. and then I'll make one more pass around just to be sure that everything's correct. All right, now that we have our phaser limiter installed and we've removed our tool, we can go ahead and proceed with installing the timing components on the engine and setting the timing. So the first thing that we're going to do is install our lower gear and this is a bit of a special instance as this is a stroker engine and you'll also want to make sure if it is a stroker engine and it's a VBT that you have the Modern Muscle Extreme VBT stroker ring installed. Uh, this faces the gear out to properly align the timing components. One thing that I've noted that makes timing easier is putting a small dot on the actual timing mark on the lower gear, because uh, it is kind of small and it helps you to see it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take our lower gear and install it on the crankshaft. You're gonna wanna make sure that it's fully seated uh, onto the BBT ring, and if the instance that this is a stroker, uh, normally this will just seat up against the snout of your crankshaft. Next, we're going to go over timing your engine. Your phaser will have a mark on one of the teeth. And once again, it's kind of hard to see, so I put a little paint pen dot on it, so that way you can actually see it, and it really helps when you time your engine. So the actual timing chain itself is going to have two rectangles that are colored on the chain at the top, and then at the bottom, it's going to have a single, a single colored uh, rectangle. So the way that this goes together, you take your phaser and your chain, so I can get this on camera here, and then you're gonna take each of the two rectangles and put them on either side of the gear. And then the correct orientation for the lower one is that the crankshaft gear has a dot on it on one of the teeth as well, and you're going to take this and put it directly on the tooth with the dot. of a new camshaft you should always use a new camshaft bolt. These are very inexpensive and they are torque to yield fastener uh, so it's very important that you go ahead and install our camshaft bolt. I'm not going to put Loctite on it yet because I want to verify that the engine is in time before I Loctite this and final torque it. We're just 
gonna leave it finger tight for uh, assembly purposes. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our timing chain tensioner and our timing chain guide. We're gonna apply a small dab of Loctite to each of the bolts before we install. Go ahead, we'll take our tensioner and install it. Once again, verifying that our lower gear it has the one single rectangular colored link on it on our tooth with the mark. And then we'll go ahead and put our tensioner in here. Okay, now that we have our tensioner and guide installed, we're going to go ahead and torque that up to 100 inch pounds. Go ahead and put a paint pin mark on it, and you can never double check yourself enough times. Okay, now we have our timing marks the way that they should be lined up. Once again, we're going to have each rectangle on either side of the upper mark, and then the single one, uh, the single rectangle on the bottom on the tooth of the crankshaft here with the dot. Okay, the other thing where this loses a lot of people and a lot of people are confused is that when the number one cylinder is at top dead center, the lower timing mark is not gonna be exactly straight up and down like you would traditionally time a Chevrolet engine. So you're still gonna have your upper gear with your mark in the 12 o'clock position, but your lower gear down here is actually going to be more towards the five o'clock position instead of pointing straight down. And this is where a lot of people get confused because it times a little differently than what they're normally used to. So one other thing also to note is that because of the way the timing chain has a shorter run on this side and a longer run on this side, once you rotate the engine over, your timing marks will never line back up. So if you get all this together and you start rotating your engine over and you get it back up to top dead center, you're going to go, oh no, my timing marks don't line up. But that's okay because it's the way, it's just the way that things work out with the chain. This camshaft, we're going to make sure that that, when we get done finish, finishing the degreeing process, and I'll show you that in a few moments, that this camshaft is indeed at 106 degrees intake center line. If you degree your camshaft and you find out that it is 15 to 20 degrees before or after its manufacturer's installed intake center line point, you will want to double check your timing marks and this lets you know kind of as a double check to your timing marks that they are where they need to be. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my camshaft degreeing tools and then I'll show you how to do that. All right, now that we have, I have all my cam degreeing tools installed, uh, one other important thing to note before we pull the pin on our tensioner here is that we wanna check and make sure that our camshaft has in play. So you just lightly push the cam back and forth and I can hear a very small click. If you wanna measure this with the dial indicator, the spec, the factory spec is 3 thousandths to 11 thousandths camshaft inflow. So now that we have that, we've checked that, we're gonna go ahead and pull our pin on our tensioning system. And our climbing chain tensioner has moved over and put tension on the chain. So that way our climbing marks don't move from where we've set them. So I'm gonna go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my wheel to zero by checking top dead center of my number one piston. Okay, I went up 
until this thing has stopped. It's 12 and it's just getting ready to go back in. And we do realize that not everybody has access to all these tools to be able to do this as it does take a solid lifter to be able to degree. But in the event that your shop does have uh, camshaft degreeing tools, it is a very, very good idea to degree any cam that you install because it verifies installation. I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to take my wheel and I just have, this is just a basic little piece of rod bolted on to the front cover bolt. And I'll go ahead and set my wheel this way. You can also use a piston stop uh, to verify and set your, set your wheel up here. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we want to do is I have a dial indicator on the intake valve or the intake lifter and what we're going to want to do is bring the intake uh, lifter up to peak lifter rise and then we're going to measure 50, 000, the degree on our wheel 50 thousandths past peak lifter rise and 50 thousandths before peak lifter before peak lifter rise so we're going to go ahead and start rotating our engine over just started to move. And my dial indicator is slowing down and I'm going to watch exactly where it stops. Right there. And then I'm going to adjust my zero on my dial indicator. Okay. Now this is the, the lifter is at full lift, so what we're going to do is we're going to back off 50 thousandths. Okay, and then I'm going to look at my wheel, and my wheel says 57. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my cam card, and I'm going to write 57 on here. want to go 50 thousandths on the other side of peak lifter rise. Okay, and my wheel says 154. So we're going to write that down. So now what we're going to do, now that we have our two numbers, we're going to take 57 and 154 and add them together, which comes up to 211, if my math is correct. And we're going to divide that in half, and we get 105 and a half. After we've added our numbers up, and we have, this should be the exact camshaft intake center line install point. Setting up the zero, uh, you know, piston stop could also help you with that. Uh, or you go on either side of top dead center and adjust your wheel for zero. But for instructional purposes, this is a little bit easier way to do it and it still gets you very close. So 105 and a half, we would call that good. And then once again on the timing mark thing, even if I rotate this back up the to top dead center again, my marks are completely off of. Uh, off the top of my face where they have moved. So if we, the only way to get them back would be to go all the way back around again. And the marks are back. That completes our camshaft degreeing process. And now that we've checked and we've verified our timing marks, now what we're going to do is I'm going to remove all this and then we'll go ahead and I'll tell you a little bit about torquing down the cam bolt and some ways that uh, you can prevent camshaft failure by you know, properly installing the bolt. Now we have, uh, we've degreed our camshaft, we've verified our timing marks, the cam's installed properly. 
uh, it's going to run good here. Uh, one thing to note, if you, uh, if you do have the timing marks uh, a tooth off, uh, we get a lot, of, a lot of guys calling in here about uh, cam crank codes, cam crank sync codes, uh, and typically that would be uh, an indication that your timing marks are not properly aligned. So what we're going to do, it is actually okay to take this bolt back out after you've released the tensioning system because the tensioner actually keeps enough force on here to keep the upper gear from falling off. So we're going to go ahead and take our bolt back out that we've put in hand, you know, hand tight. Okay, it is actually okay to remove this bolt after we've released the tensioning system because the tensioner keeps enough uh, tension on the actual upper gear that it keeps it from falling off. So it is okay to take it back out to apply the Loctite and torque it. Um, and now I'd like to touch on uh, a little bit about the bolt and clamping force and uh, some issues that you may have seen out there uh, or heard about, which is the pin on the end of the camshaft will actually shear off. Um, and, you know, obviously when that happens, it, you know, all the valve train will collide with the pistons and it creates a giant mess. So part that's part of the reason that we're creating this video is because we want to keep that from happening. And 99% of the time it is related to an assembly error and not, you know, not comp cam's fault for creating the cam and the way they put the pin in. So the actual pin is not there to drive this gear. It does not drive this. That is absolutely false. The clamping load associated with tightening this bolt and clamping the phaser to the camshaft is what actually uh, drives this gear. The pin is purely there for alignment purposes only. Once again, it does not drive this gear. So if the pin breaks, it is directly related with not enough clamping load on the phaser to the camshaft. So, usually what happens is it's one of two things, or a combination of two. It's this bolt is not replaced because this is a torque deal bolt. It is a one-time use. Once you torque this, you throw it away. You don't ever put it back in your engine. Uh, and the other failure is that, uh, you know, not cleaning the cam properly, not cleaning the bolt hole out, not degreasing the bolt hole. And I touched on that a little bit earlier. But one thing you can do is after you're done cleaning the cam, you can spray a little brake clean up in the cam bolt hole to make sure that there, you know, there's not grease, there's not oil, you know, because there is some machining oil in there from comp, you know, when they get shipped to us and obviously when you get it. So with all that being said, a new cam bolt is a necessity, not really an option. I, this is $9.99. If you're going to spend $769 on your camshaft, you're definitely going to want to replace a $10 bolt. Uh, and we do offer these on the website and they are an option uh, you know with your camshaft uh, at the very minimum you can still get them through your dealer as well uh, but just make sure that you replace this bolt because like i said it's associated with a lot of failures and there's been a lot of misinformation out there on the internet about you know pins breaking off and things of that nature uh, and the other thing that typically happens too is not only will somebody put this back in you know the old bolt they won't clean the oil off of it and the other thing that can happen is all that oil, it has to go somewhere and it can't come back out past the bolt thread. So what happens is it winds up with a little pocket of oil in the very bottom of the cam bolt hole. And this will actually hydraulic in there and it will torque down and it'll feel fine. And that's what a lot of shops say and a lot of customers say like, yeah, it torqued up fine, but there will be oil in the bottom of the bolt hole. And then this will not clamp the phaser to the cam properly. And then it'll break the pin off and it'll you know pretty much destroy the rest of the engine so uh with all that being said we're going to go ahead now we're going to reinstall our brand new oem mopar camshaft bolt so what i'm going to do is put a small amount of blue loctite on the bolt nothing too crazy don't get carried away you don't need to coat the entire bolt small amount blue loctite not going all the way up and down the bolt, just the end of it. And then that'll disperse itself around the threads as it goes in. So. Okay, now that we have the bolt installed, we are going to torque it to 90 foot-pounds. 
and that is the OEM torque spec for the bolt since we're using an OEM bolt. Okay, so you can see my torque wrench there, set up to 90 foot pounds. And I'm going to go ahead, and you're going to need uh, some way to hold the engine from rotating while you tighten this bolt. And I use two flywheel bolts in the rear uh, into the crankshaft to hold it. you'll actually see the phaser spring working and I'll slowly go, the engine is not rotating and you can see the phaser actually working and that is what operates the VVT uh, part of the camshaft uh, you know, while your engine's running. So we'll go ahead and get it on. Okay, and our snap-on torque wrench has beeped. I'm then going to go ahead and mark my hand bolt so I know that I have torqued it. 